Saturday night in Clemson, South Carolina, the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs came up to only get hammered 48-20. to Yeah, they put up a good fight in the first half, but Clemson overpowered them. Thank you so much for joining me on this channel. Not Bobby Durkins. I'm Brian Knight. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, most likely you are because it's a new channel, pass along this video to anyone who just likes college football, whether they love or hate Clemson. So I do appreciate that. I've already received a lot of really cool messages from everybody out there, and that does mean a lot to, to me. Just to let you know that as I am speaking, I'm actually live streaming this on the Bobby Durkins channel. So, yeah, that is, that is super cool that I'm live streaming as I'm recording this one. So let's dive into the game. In the first half, Clemson looked very unfocused. Uh, of course, there was there was the there was the beautiful honoring of Brian Brissy's uh, sister Ella, and um, it was very it was very nice. Everybody from the University of South Carolina to other schools throughout the country um, offered their condolences to Brian as well as Clemson University. Um, as I said, the University of South Carolina did. I know Bobby Durkins picked on them the other night, but it, he was not talking about that. It was, it was just me and Bobby. Uh, Louisiana Tech, Sonny Cumbie's team, as well as Sonny Cumbie actually came out in an Ella Strong shirt. Um, their players wrote, uh, individually wrote uh, special notes to Brian just to encourage he and his family, and that was a class act. So it's good to see things like this in college football uh, because college football is supposed to be entertainment and an escape from everyday life. And to, and to see a real moment like the passing of someone's loved one, uh, to just see everybody put like sports aside and say, hey, we're just, we're just going to honor you, that's really, really kind. And it really keeps things in perspective. So that was really cool to, uh, for them to do that and... And I really do appreciate it. Um, and, and I know that Brian Brissy's family definitely has to. So um, let's get into the game. DJ came out. DJ looked like he was improving yet again. Now, of course, you know me. If you, if you follow Bobby Durkins, you, or even talk to me in person, you know that I am a, one of the happiest pessimists you'll ever meet. I am not just trying to find a problem with everything, but if there's a problem there, I'm going to tell you. There's a problem here. We need to figure out how to fix it, okay? DJ last year, had he played against Louisiana Tech, would have not thrown the majority of the passes that he threw the other night. There would have been a great chance that a few of them would have been picked off. We'd all been la left scratching our heads wondering, you know, what is Sweeney thinking? He's being loyal to a fault, blah, blah, blah. But DJ came out and threw some really good passes. I'm talking about he threw some fantastic passes. Now, yes, it's Louisiana Tech. But go back to what I said just a second ago. It is really important for you to notice that he would not have made a lot of those passes last year. So we're seeing a progression from game one to game two, game three. Now we have Wake Forest. I'll get, I'll get on uh, that subject in another video. Wake Forest is not amazing, but the, the competition is getting more and more competitive and then in less than a week and a half, we'll be playing NC State in the Valley. That'll be another video for another time as well. So it was good to see him to progress. Um, uh, Bo Collins is Bo Collins. I've been really high on this guy since uh, 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 the summer before last season. The guy looks ridiculous. He's talented. He's really living up and actually going beyond the hype. Um, we also see the Antonio Williams, the speedster. You know, Clemson last year, we always heard about, you don't have a speed threat. You don't have it. We got a speed threat now. And that speed threat, unlike a lot of speed threats, can actually catch the flipping football. So he went out there and made some ridiculous catches. I mean, this guy, I, I haven't been this excited to see a player like this in a long time. I mean, he is ridiculous. Um, and that's saying a lot with all the great players that, that Clemson uh, has and has had in the past. Uh, he's looking great. Davis Allen coming out there and catching that, uh, catching some good passes. But we also have to talk about Joseph Ngata laying out. This was the drive early on, heading towards the hill, or not the hill, towards the west end zone. He lays out, he catches the pass. It gave us uh, uh, reminders of last season, which was incredible. The only thing is, after that, things were kind of shaky. 
for Joseph. Uh, we saw E.J. Williams drop at least one pass that was like a give me. He had the inside slant. The ball was in his hands. It was not D.J.'s fault. There we go. Uh, Will Shipley showing out, uh, averaging somewhere around 11 yards per carry. The guy looked ridiculous. He's very shifty. My favorite running back beside him is, uh, I've been very vocal about this as well, Phil Moffa. Phil Moffa is one of those guys, he'll bruise you, and then he'll hit fifth gear and outrun everybody on the field. Really liking what I'm seeing from him as well. The offensive line could continue to get better, but I cannot say that they digressed. Uh, th this past week, which is, hey, I, I'd rather you hold place than digress, you know. On the defensive side of the football, um, players like Trenton Simpson, Miles Murphy, those guys are really going head-to-head, -head, doing a lot of great work. I will say that the other night during the game that I totally found out that uh, the way that those officials, and normally I don't pick on the officials, but those officials, the way that they judged a pass interference versus every other game that I've ever watched was way different. Um, I really didn't like the pass interference call against uh, Fred Davis in the second half. Um, a lot of people would probably say, oh, well, he tackled that wide receiver the entire evening. Listen to me, folks. The entire evening, they had allowed that type of physical play all night long. And they, it, they had no problem with it. So... My point is, I really didn't enjoy enjoy the the that particular call versus the rest of the night because the rest of the night was like, oh, they're just going to let the DBs and the you know secondary and the and the receivers duke it out, and then you have that call which made absolutely no sense just because the team's getting railed like they uh, like you know Louisiana Tech ended up being railed didn't mean that you have to give them some type of bailout makeup call. It happens Clemson still wins the game by four touchdowns. Now, to the credit of Louisiana Tech, Parker McNeil, their six foot six, 220 pound plus plus ish uh, um, quarterback, that guy looked really good. He really looked good. And, and what always makes me laugh is when uh, someone like myself gets on here and we'll talk about some player who's not part of some massive team. And it's like, that's so dumb. It's because they did good against your team. And you're like, well, hold on. Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl, and he played at Delaware. Um, Trey Lance played, what, at North Dakota State? And I know that they're a good FCS program, but guys, how many just amazing quarterbacks comes out of FCS just all the time? It doesn't happen all the time. You know it. I know it. I would not be shocked if Parker McNeil ends up getting picked up in the late round, even free agency, goes to an NFL team. It might be a few years, and then suddenly this guy comes out, and he does he does pretty well in the NFL. I'm not saying he's going to be a Tom Brady, a Brady or anything, but I'm telling you, that guy could throw the football. His field vision is fantastic. Six foot six actually helps. Uh, but my, my point here is the guy was really good. Trey Harris, Traymon Harris. I can't remember if it's Traymon or Trey Harris. Uh, the tall wide receiver, number three, guy was ridiculous. If you watch the way he walked, the way he moved, the way he talks, he was just, I mean, he was just something else. I was i was telling Chase and a few other people were sitting around me, hey, man, you need to check it. I mean, watch this guy. And by the end of the first quarter, they were like, wow, you're right. This guy really looks good, and he does. So um, Clemson definitely needs to work on their coverage and their assignments when it comes to the secondary and the linebacker play when it comes to coverage. Now, I'm re not really talking about Trenton Simpson here. Uh, I would just like to see it, when you're going to run a cover four, when you're going to run uh, certain assignments, especially against that offense, because that's a Mike Leach air raid style offense, you have to be on top of your assignments more than usual, especially because they're going to pass heavy. So if you're going to run the zone, you have to have your man uh, allocated to the zone that he's supposed to be in, because if he's not, guess what? Busted coverage. We saw that a lot the other night. Fred Davis struggled, though Fred Davis, I, he just needs experience. That's it. I mean, he's had, he's had uh, Goodrich and Booth and Sheridan Jones and all these other players in front of him for a long time, and now it's his chance. Even though you're a five-star, highly rated coming out of high school, you still need experience. Uh, so uh, he never gave up. He continued to, to get better, continue to grow, and that's what we need early on in this first four-game stretch of the season if Clemson really wants to grow and make a run at it. What are my takeaways from this game? 
once again, DJ looking a lot better. One thing I will say to the coaching staff, and I know they're not, if, even if they heard this, they're just going to, they're not going to pay any attention, but just for talking purposes, if you're going to put Cade out there, put Cade out there with your first team offense. Putting him out there with a second team offense uh, does not make him look good. Notice what happened when they put him out there with the first team offense against Georgia Tech. The guy looked like gold. You need to give him that chance to go out there with good players, players that is like him. I'm not, I'm not taking a dump on the second string. I'm just saying the talent drop off. You could, you could really see it in the lack of, of uh, uh, really just a good team effort. They're, they weren't really jailed. So that's one thing. So if you're going to put Kate out there, do it. Uh, another thing, run Moffa more. You've got you you have Will Shipley. You need to use uh, Will Shipley. One of the reasons that Christian McCaffrey has stayed injured in his NFL career is because they use him too much. Use him too much. My thought is, and I know some people would disagree with me, especially at this point in the season. Keep him as healthy as you can, and you do that by dishing off a few more carries to Moffa. Moffa is my favorite second back. Uh, I would run Moffa first back and even use uh, Shipley as a as a gimmick player, playing him at running back, playing him also sending him out in motion and so on. He's just that type of player you can put him anywhere, and he's he's electrifying. But I'm saying you can do that. You you have the ability to do that because Moffa is there. So I would take a look at Moffa there. Continue to use uh, uh, the receivers who are doing great for you. Obviously, Bo Collins, uh, Davis Allen, and and Antonio Williams is just showing out. That's that's incredible. But we still have to build the confidence of Ngata, and we got to get A.J. Williams back to where he was as a freshman. As a freshman, the kid I was going, I was I was talking about A.J. Williams two years ago like I'm talking about Bo Collins right now. Actually, Bo Collins last year when I was saying this guy's going to be something else and he really stepped in and did a lot of great things. So my point here, my point here is that that we we have to get those two guys going, and I'd like to see Dakari Collins gain more confidence because he's a big body. He has a lot of talent. We saw some good things out of him towards the end of last season. For a championship team, we know what it's like to win a championship at Clemson. Everybody has to be involved. Everybody has to be there ready just in case something bad happens to one of the starting players to where someone is next man up, they're ready to go, and it's also good to work them in so – Certain players are not more prone to injury because they're playing all the time. That's one thing. On the defensive side of the ball, we've got to get, we've got to get our secondary. And if you're going to play man in, or zone in certain types of coverages, in certain situations, we have to get people making the decision where they're going to be at, what is their assignment, and how are they going to, uh, to, to take care of it. And that's one thing that I saw the other night. Had we been playing a better team, I think that they could have taken more advantage of it. Um, kudos once again to, to uh, Sonny Cumbie and, and Louisiana Tech. They did a really, really good job. Also, you have to look at it this way. When you're Clemson, you're a team like Clemson who's consistently in the top five, six, seven, every year won a couple of national championships out, out, out of the past you know, five, six years, um, you're always going to get people's very best. Also, another way that you can tell that you're going to get the very best out of uh, or, or that your team is respected is go look at ticket prices. No matter where Clemson goes, their ticket prices are shot through the roof. Wake Forest, I mean, this past weekend for the Liberty game, Liberty came to town. It was a back-and-forth game. You could have bought tickets the other night for $15 a piece. Trust me, I checked online. Clemson game, we're looking from somewhere $75 plus per ticket. Why? Because they are a big team. When you are a big team, you have a massive target on your back. And when you have a massive target on your back, it means that you're going to get the very best of everybody. So there, some of it is that Clemson is still having to work out some crap and that they need to get the uh, certain things together. On the other hand, you're getting the very best from every team. You're the team that's being circled on the, uh, on the schedule at the beginning of the season. Everybody says that's the game that we really want to show our best to. So um, There's a lot of growing pains. We still need to get better. But I'm glad to see that Clemson is moving up. 
the trajectory is going up as they're moving through their schedule. They have one more game that I think is not easy, but it's it's not a, a difficult game. They play Wake Forest, and then they play NC State at the Valley in a couple of less than a couple of weeks. Well, thank you so much for checking me out here. Of course, Bobby Durkins, go check him out if you haven't seen him. I warn you, he is not me. But he is. Um, hit the subscribe button and pass it on to anybody who would check it out. I'm Brian Knight, and thank you for joining me on Not Bobby Durkins. Go Tigers.